Kim Gidley, thanks for stopping by. Uh, ITAs, your team performed pretty well in my uh, estimation. What's yours? Yeah, we had a lot of matches, a lot of days, uh, a lot of missed school days, but they really stepped up to the challenge and um, was such a young team for them to kind of learn what that tournament was about was pretty special. Is it Chow? Is, am I saying her name right, her last name right? That, that it was 4-1 and one on the weekend. That's a good performance by a freshman. Yeah, Karina, she's had three tournaments in a row where she's made the semis. Um, and even that last match, uh, she had set points in the first set against a BYU player. Um, she beat some really strong players throughout the tournament. You know, twice she lost the first set. And even one time she lost 6-0, and you're like, okay, this is going to be over quick, and next thing you know, uh, she's in it. So she really does a tremendous job of keeping a lot of balls in play and not panicking. And, uh, you know, she had some big wins from some big schools this week, so that was fun to see for her. How are you finding these players? Where are you finding these players? How does Air Force women's tennis continue to stay relevant despite being the Air Force Academy? Well, they're all U.S. players, basically. So, you know, we really got to find someone who really wants to play and have that opportunity for, you know, phenomenal education. And when they're here, they really learn how special this place is and what a unique opportunity they're going to get to serve their country. And it, it's certainly a process in that. Um, and even the ones that think they know, they, they really don't until they experience it. And all of our juniors, when they get to, ex, you know, acceptance day and, and that, they're super, super excited for that dinner and ready to step up for the challenge. And that's something that we want to embrace for them, too. Yeah. Back to tennis. A lot of teams kind of play through the ITA and then they stop fall tennis. You're going to continue here for a while. Why is it important for you to just continue to play even more matches here in the fall? You know, this is our time for catch up. We don't get to play during the summer and uh, because we miss a lot of those opportunities. Um, if, if we can play, you know, through the middle of November, uh, then, then basically we feel like we've caught up a lot from what we missed during the summer. And then we still get that break during Thanksgiving and Christmas. So. Uh, anyone else you want to highlight from the ITAs? I know your doubles played fairly well as well. Right. We, we had some opportunities in the doubles with uh, um, some different teams and, and going with that. We're still looking at combinations. But really in the singles, Haley Stale is a sophomore. Um, she's had same thing, Bedford Cup. She's had some really high UTR wins. Uh, she beat the number seven seed from University of Utah from the Pac-12 um, in straight sets. So she's really stepped it up. Uh, Sydney Fitch, even though she, she lost first round, then she went ahead and played two extra matches in the back draw, beat a player she had lost to in straight sets, you know, at Bedford, and then beat another fine player. So the fact that, you know, they're, we're still kind of young and they're stepping up and then wanting to play and having those wins um, is, is really important. But uh, I, I would really look, look for to see down the road some really big things from Stealth and Fitch. Fitch has continued to grow and develop, you know, from every tournament, tournament to tournament. And even with Stealth, you know, she was did a great job last year, but that was the thing. We, we didn't get the fall last year. And I think had she had that opportunity, um, you know, she, she still won, you know, had one of the top winning percentages on the team. Uh, yeah, I think she was like 16-3 and three last year playing six, but really had she had the fall, I think she would have been at four. And so this year she's definitely moved up, super coachable. And she's both of them add that coachability into the doubles. And so in the doubles right now, we're just trying to find three teams that we feel that we have great strength and great opportunities to win versus like we could have a super team. We could probably even have two super teams. I think we're doing doing that well. Um, with that, but we really want three solid teams where we have that great opportunity. And that's this is all experience that we're getting to see, getting to play and look at. And even some of the freshmen, Alexis Odom toward the end, she, she really stepped up and when she got to play some extra matches and uh, beat a player from BYU at the end too and lost the first set and came back. So those are the kind of things we want to see at this time of year. Absolutely. Kim Gidley, thanks for taking the time. We'll talk to you next week. Go Blue.